What up players, it's Warbots Tap in this mud. Um, today I'm gonna be unboxing this box of witches that I am planning to build up and paint for a commission job of mine. And um, just looking at the color, or the cover, and the colors that Games Workshop uses for these guys you can, and girls, you can tell right from the outset that it's a lot of dark blacks for the bodysuits, green, dark green highlights on the armor, um, dark silvers and golds, and <clears throat> the the skin, the dark elder skin is really going to stand out. So um, follow along and see what's inside the box with me. So first we're going to take a look at the instructions and as you can see they very clearly show which parts go where for the very specialized troops. They show you a finished product of what they look like and they have these great little uh, boxes that show you when you have an option between the two which one to choose uh, that you have a choice. Which means that you have a lot of leftover bits which I love as a collector. Then it also it shows you here's the, uh, the Hecatrix, that's what her name is, that's what she's called. I might have called her a Sibrite. <clears throat> um, so it shows you that she's got blaster pistol, splinter pistol, she's got two choices of, of hair pieces, two choices of weaves um, for her back. She's got this trophy rack looking thing and you can either give her an agonizer or a power weapon for her left hand. On this page you see our Chardonnay and Impaler Dark Eldar, which and uh, what she looks like when she's all built up. And then down here you see the witch with the razor flails. What I think is really interesting is that, um, you know, these parts are all interchangeable. There's nothing that says you need to give this guy the, the bald head or you need to give the other guy here the, the, uh, the faceless mask, the Cobra Commander mask. It's really up to you <coughs> um, and you can mix and match and end up with a lot of different pieces. So I know uh, one of my uh, viewers in YouTube said that he does, doesn't like, or a couple people I've, I've seen mention that, you know, they don't really like the male witches, the fact that there are male witches, so um, they're planning on trading out the female torsos for the uh, Cabalite warriors, although they may be a little bit more, uh, a little bit better armored, but I don't think, really, if that's not going to be an issue, then I, I don't think it should be. Just put all these male torsos in the Cabalite Warrior squad and trade them out. Like, really, from across the table, no one's going to notice. And it's really do what makes you happy, I say, as a, as a collector. Um, also, it shows you in really great detail how these, how these parts of the models go together. How one leg attaches to the second leg, and then torso. I think, um, is it the Cabalite Warriors that have, like, both legs together on the ground, but then, like, you got to uh, glue on their butt piece or something like that. So it shows you how they're different. Just like the Cabalite Warriors, they have a front piece of the torso and a back piece. <coughs> this last one is just a regular old witch with a choice of weapon. And I love the variety of their close combat weapons. They've all got splinter pistols, but for close combat weapons, some of them have these knives. Some of them are gripped in different, different ways. Uh, really, really cool. And these are also close combat weapons. These stabby bits, this uh, flail on a chain, stabby bit, stabby bit. So <clears throat> I love that these are like counts as uh, hand weapon, close combat weapon, I mean, and I think it's really cool. So let's take a look at the sprue now. You get, on one sprue, you get torsos, fronts, and backs leg pieces. The legs for the uh, Hecatrix is they're both connected to the base. I guess they're uh, bracing her. She's not as as crazy and running in immediately to to cut it up with the foe as the rest of her brood. So I th think that's cool. It's a good way to differentiate. And um, I love how the different torsos look different. The Cabalite Warriors, they basically all look the same, but I, I'm very impressed with how they gave the bodysuits different looking textures and different looking patterns and make it all look really really cool. And you've got the heads and more legs on the side. Blaster pistols, uh, razor flails, I mean splinter pistols, the one blaster pistol, 
stabby stabby bit, different heads. <clears throat> uh, I think it's really awesome. So, who knows? You get the flail power weapon here, the back trophy, the trophy rack for the back, different braid braid hair pieces, and uh, Hecatrice Hecatrix head, and agonizer. And just the, the choice of heads. I love that you get so many heads that you end up with an abundance of extra bits. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put together 10 witches, just like I did for my Dark Eldar project. And then I'm going to come back and show you what they look like. And I'll also show you what bits you have left over for converting and doing other things with your Dark Eldar range. Okay, so stay tuned and um, we'll be right back. Alright, hey, we're back and um, I built up my my witches and let's take a look at what I did. I decided to use most of these uh, splinter pistols and uh, knife close knife close combat weapons because on the sprue you've got like those those chain flails and the, the spiky jabby uh, gauntlets that I think would make great um, what are those special which is called, I forget, not Trueborns, those are Cavalite Warriors, um, Blood Brides maybe. <clears throat> um, so I decided to give the rest of these guys like the splinter pistols and the knives. And um, some of them, what I found is that the way the shoulder joint is angled, it's going to change the direction of, of, the, um, of the, 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 the weapon that the limb is holding. So for example, this model is holding the splinter pistol uh, kind of like across across the torso, whereas the same kind of bent angle, this one is holding kind of out more towards the side. It's not slung across the torso, as opposed to, let's find one more, yeah, <clears throat> like this one too, where it's kind of like holding it out to the side. Some of them, the knives are in this reverse grip that I think is super cool. This one, this one I decided to do with this uh, bladed kind of weapon, kind of like this dude is holding it behind him, tucked behind his back, and then it just breaks it around like, like, with the elbow, like running, 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 shooting, shooting, and then just like that. <laughs> So I think that's pretty cool. I decided to, I've got two boxes of these that I have to build up for my clients. So I decided to build one of them with a male Hecatrix and the other is a female Hecatrix and to make it like they're twins. One's a boy and one's a girl. I think that's pretty kind of fluffy. So he's got an agonizer and a blast pistol just like his sister, but I gave him a male torso and the uh, this shaven head. So let's take a look at now, those are my 10 witches. Let's take a look at what you get still on the sprue after all of that. You get, if you decide to build a full squad of 10 with one of them as a Hecatrix with the special weapon, and if you decide to build one with the special weapon, so like my Hecatrix has a blaster pistol, blast pistol and an agonizer, and I gave this one girl these Hydra Gauntlets, which means that you get two extra uh, close combat weapons. You can also get whatever special weapon you didn't use, so in this case the Shardnet Impaler. <clears throat> you also get the two splinter weapons in case you decide to not make them all regular infantrymen. You get these two helmets, which I decided not to use. I decided I'm going to recycle these and use them for uh, Cabalite Trueborn Warriors if I decide to use any of those um, to differentiate them. I've also got this uh, one head that I ended up not using. And I've got these spiky, punchy gauntlets. Here's another head I ended up not using. It's gonna go into the bits box. These razor flails, which I think are super, super awesome. Um, but the client didn't want them, so they are still on the thing. Here's the one of the braids. I decided to, even though it wasn't for the Hecatrix, I decided to use the braid for one of the models. So one of my models back here, one of my witches has, um, has the braid and the head that would usually go on the Hecatrix. I just gave it to another regular old model just because the braid is so cool. I just want to paint that up. 
looks really nice. You also get the power weapon, and um, these close combat weapons. They count as close combat weapons, but they look so cool. These chain, chained, uh, <clears throat> I don't know what you call them, those chain weapons. Some more spiky, punchy bits. I think I'll definitely keep these and use them for like any special specialist warriors or uh, maybe if I get some Hellions or whatever later or I'll just um, hold on to them for the Venom maybe for the, the models on the Venom if they can be equipped with anything besides whatever they're supposed to be using if they have like a close combat weapon and a splinter pistol I think it'll be pretty cool so <clears throat> okay that's all for this unboxing I hope you liked it I'm gonna get on to filming the companion video for this my Dark Eldar Day 2 progress update so I hope you enjoyed this unboxing of the Dark Eldar witches this completes my 20 models of two separate witch units that I'm gonna have to paint for my client and I'm gonna get onto that now so thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one